uh, I believe, I'm sure, the, and it was just ironic that I came up with this message because uh, while I, the Lord gave me the message before we went through this storm like we did. And uh, we're going to find out some great factors today. I got a lot of stuff to give you, but I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to condense it that we can all get a good understanding of what God has for us. Amen. The topic of our message is this. What will you do when tested or tempted? What will you do when tested or tempted? Now, this word tempted comes from a word we call temptation. It comes from that word as a short form of temptation. When, what will you do when you're tempted or are you going through a temptation or when you're tested? Because when you go through a temptation, you are going through a test. Amen. And we do understand that not only do the law permit us to go through a test in life, but also the devil tempts us. But he used in a different connotation because the way that the Lord tests us is to make us better. But the devil tests or tempts us to make us fall. Amen. So we're going to kind of get some factors about that. And I want to make sure that if you have your pen in your pad, you write this down because you need it. You need to know it. Uh, so if you got any type of information, papers or something, you can write this down so you can see these, these things because we're going to go directly to the, to the throne of God and Hopefully that you'll be blessed before you get out of here with a great message. Amen. Number one, A, temptation comes after the high point in your spiritual life. Remember that. Your temptation comes after the high point in your spiritual life. When the Lord does something great for you in a spiritual way, in, a spiritual, in your spiritual life, that's when temptation comes to try to make you ignore what the Lord has just done. You just came off a natural spiritual high. And then all of a sudden, here come a temptation. I don't know if you've ever gone through that, but I know I have gone through that time. I mean, when you just got to, I mean, you feel like you're sitting on top of the world, looking like the Lord just done something miraculously, and you're excited about it, then all of a sudden, here come a temptation. Amen? So temptation comes right after a high point in your spiritual life. Number two, Satan constantly fights against God. And those who follow and obey God, Satan constantly, I mean, he don't stop. He constantly fight against God and those who follow and obey God. He constantly comes after us. That means you're going to be in a constant fight, in a constant battle all through your life because Satan is upset with you because he lost you. He can't use you no more to do his dirty work. So now he's coming against you to make you think your servitude to the Lord is in vain. You're wasting your time. What is he doing for you now and all of that? So he constantly fight against you to make you believe that God is not there for you. God is ignoring what you're going through. God is not there to help you in your crisis. Amen. So he constantly fight against God and those who follow and obey God. Number three. Knowing and obeying God's word is reflective weapon against temptation. Knowing and obeying God's word is reflective weapon against temptation. So anytime you go to a temptation, when you know and obey God's word is a weapon against that temptation, so you won't be. The Lord said we're going to have temptations. But every way of a temptation, he's going to give us an escape route. That means if, you, if you're going through a temptation, don't. So come to it. Don't, don't let it get the best of you. He's going to give you an escape route to get out of that temptation. Temptation going to come. You're going to go through some temptation. There's some stuff going to tip you to make you do the wrong thing. But the Lord is telling you that if you just hold on, he's going to give you a way out of that temptation. Amen. So remember that. That's number three. Knowing and obeying God's word is reflective weapon against temptation. Number four. Satan also know scripture and is adapted at twisting it to suit his purpose. He would twist the scriptures. He know the word, but he would twist it. Amen. To get the best of you. And sometimes we can find ourselves as being Christians, we would try to twist the word to satisfy our desires. Well, God didn't say that. I've heard so many people tell me, it's nothing wrong with drinking wine. You know, uh, where the Lord drank wine, the first miracle that he performed, turning water into wine. Didn't he do it? Yes, he did. 
Where in the Bible did it say you can't drink wine? Where in the Bible did it say this? I mean, there are some things that should be brought to our understanding. We don't have to see the word to understand. The word let us know that anything that caused your brother to stumble, we need not to do it. So how will you look as being confessed Christian out here getting drunk and somebody look at you saying, I thought you was a Christian. That's the first thing they tell you. Why? Because it's a hindrance to your walk. The Bible said we ought to abstain from all our pieces of evil. I mean, you know, now some folks say, you know, I drank wine on occasion on, on drinking and on eating and all that. I understand people doing that. You know, if, 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 if you are not convicted by it, then it's not wrong to you. Some folks can't drink no wine because they're convicted by it. Some folks may drink a little wine, but some folks go through the excess. Amen. That's why many times if the cops catch you down the road and you're, and you're driving erratically, the first thing they will stop you, how many, how many drinks you had? Oh, I had a couple. They know you're lying. Everybody said, I just had a couple drinks. Okay, then they tell you, say, okay, we're going to give you a sobriety test. I want you to walk that line. Boy, you want to go there with a butt on the line. He said, okay, put your hand behind your back. What you doing? You're drunk. He's he going to slap you with the cuffs. Why? Because he know it. But he will allow you to stumble. He will allow you to look at yourself. And then he will tell you, okay, follow my hand. All of a sudden, you look at that hand. You, okay, put your hand behind your back. So Satan knows Scripture and is adapted at twisting it to suit his purpose. Number five. You don't think I was going to be through right then, did you? It was necessary for Jesus and us to be tempted because temptation is part of human experience. It was necessary for Jesus and us to be tempted. Why? Because temptation is part of, is part of our experience. We're going to have to go through temptation. It's part of our experience as being a human being. You're going to have to everybody go through temptation. So don't think when you're going through, man, I don't know why I'm going through it. I'm trying to do the right thing and all that. Everybody's saying the same thing because it's part of human experience. As being a human being, we're going to have temptation going to come our way. Amen. It's necessary because Jesus had to be tempted. We're also going to go through temptation. Amen. Number six, Jesus had to undo Adam's work who passed sin to all humans by failing to sin, or falling to sin, I'm sorry. Jesus had to undo Adam's work, who passed sin to all humans by failing to sin. He, t- he, he went through a test, but he failed it. Amen? He went through a test. He went through a temptation. The devil came there to tempt him. The third, amen. We look at the third chapter of the book of Genesis. It tells us about how Satan came into the garden, amen, as a sort of creature. And when he came there, he's so manipulative, he's so cunning that he waited till the husband was not present and talked to the wife. And when he talked to her, he, what he caused her to be subject to temptation. God is not going to kill you. You're going to be as a God. God told us that we eat of it, we're going to surely die. Amen. She, she knew what God had told her husband, Adam, because God gave the commandment to the man and told him, you know, in, in other words, all these trees in this garden, I would give you to eat. But the tree that lies in the midst of the garden, amen, of good and evil, do not eat of it, because the day you eat of it, you will surely die. That was given. She heard it. And then all of a sudden, he left. See, Satan know the right time to come and get you. He's not going to catch you when you're at your strong point. He's going to catch you at your weak point. That's why the Bible lets us know that the husband is a covering for the wife. So many times, wives don't never try to make a major decision in life unless your husband is present. Because sometimes people look at a woman as being a weak vessel. You know, I, I tell you all the time about how when you go to the car lots, and especially now people go and get cars because their cars were damaged. Amen. And uh, 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 the, 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 the dealer always goes, uh, the salesman always want to go to the wife because they know women love fabulous looking stuff. Amen. They love that shining looking items and them car looks so nice and beautiful. Amen. And they, and they would catch that wife, husband sitting in the car. He may be out there just checking the other areas out. 
They'll come over there. How you doing, ma'am? Can I help you? Well, come on, look at a car. How you like this one? I got one. Look at this one here. What you think about this one? Oh, I love it. Well, I need to talk to my husband. Well, let him know how you really love it. Let him know you really want this. He looks like he's a good man. You know, they, no, they got them lies. They know how to put them lies down. Your husband looks like a good man. Looks like he's a nice man. I'm sure he want to make you happy and give you everything you want. Just go ahead and talk to him. I'm sure he'll understand. My wife, darling, I like that. I love this car. I'm sitting down there. He ain't, he ain't looking at me because you know. See, I'm feeding right into this. He come to me. Well, your wife loves this car. I said, well, how much this car is going for? Well, so-and-so, so-and-so. I say, now, are you giving anything off on this car? Well, uh, you know, I'll tell you what. I, I can't give too much of a discount because I'm, I'm just about giving it, giving it away. I said, okay, well. I right, well, let me go look around. Let me look. Don't, no, come on, let me talk to you. Call your wife aside. Don't, darling, I'm trying to get the best of you. There are better cars than this. There's a car you really need. You need to think about durability. You need to think about how long it's going to last. You need to find out how much it's going to waste in gas. You need to find out, you know, I mean, you, you know, this is not really what you, what we really need in our home. No, don't, no, don't say in front of the, the sales or the dealer because he's going to try to manipulate this thing. So just say, excuse me, partner, I need, to talk to, I, need, I need to talk to my wife. Put her to the side and talk to her. Give her some understanding. Oh, okay. I understand. All right. I said, now, and I tell my wife many times, I said, don't, let me talk. No, we don't want this car. Excuse me? I said, we don't want this car. Well, sir, uh, i tell you what. I, you know, I'm, I'll be, you know, and you know, rub my hands. Hold on a minute. Tell you what, I can knock off two hundred dollars. What do you think about that? And I can throw away tax time license. And I take, I see, I say, still don't want the car. You gotta let him see your firm. But see, that same way Satan was over here. Satan goes over to the woman, catch her at a weak moment, and, and tells her, God is not gonna kill you. God is not gonna. You're not gonna die. Amen. You're going to be as a God. You're going to be able to see and distinguish between good and evil. You're going to be like your own little God because he was letting them know that I fail, but I ain't going to let you know that I fail because he got cast out. But he ain't going to let you know that he got cast out. That's why he was down there. Amen. But, but, but he let you know, oh, you're going to be like a God. Why? Because if you read Scripture, he was the anointed cherub. He was an angelic. He was an angel. Amen. He was, there was only three angels the Bible mentions. Amen. Gabriel, the, the messenger angel, Michael, the war angel, and Satan, or Lucifer, the fallen angel. Amen. Three angels the Bible talks about all the time. Well, he was the one that fell. And you remember, when he not only fell, when he fell, his name changed from Lucifer to Satan. He got degraded. Amen. He lost his ranking. And any time that we are high up, and if we allow the enemy to come in, he'll cause us to fall. Amen. And lose our place with God. See, I can't afford to lose my place with God because I need him all the time. You got to have him in the wee hours of the morning. You got to have him at night. When this thing occurred, everybody went to God. Folks they didn't even know God. Hey, Lord, Lord, have mercy. Everybody want God. Well, let's get him while we can. Let's get him while, while we yet up. Hold him all the time. Don't just get him just at the time. We need to stop using him as a good luck charm. I'm going to call him when I go through, but I don't need him right now. I'm going to do my own thing. No, you're going to need him every moment. I don't know about you, but every, every day you'll be hoping bad news don't come. I hate for the telephone to ring, especially while you're going through. Somebody called, oh, guess what? Oh, they said they're going to cut all the power off. I said, Jesus. My wife said, darling, <laughs> we got to get out of here. I say, hold on a minute, baby. Let me, let me call somebody. Let me call somebody. Everybody's saying that. I say, hold on a minute. Somebody ain't saying that. Let me call somebody. I call the police department. Sergeant Danny Lopez, good friend of mine. I say, Sergeant Danny, is that true about this? If they cut the power? They are not getting ready to cut no power off. 
I got that far, my wife can tell you. I said, say it again. We are not cutting the power off. I said, my wife said, thank you so much. We love you here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He said, all that social media stuff will mess your mind up. Folk getting all on the cell phone, on the, on the social media, getting on Facebook. Man, they get ready to cut the power off. They just cut the water off. They cut it off again. They just cut it off. Guess what? They cut it off again. Somebody said, if they cut the power off, somebody say, man, people breaking in your houses. I say, oh, Lord. Louisiana look good. Then they say, you can't get to Louisiana because you can't go through. Hey, man, you can't go through. I said, what's that lady over your back over there? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Back over there toward uh, Coombs and back over there. Keat Road. Can't go down Keat Road. It's underwater. How are you going to get over that easy if you can't go down to Keat Road? You can't get to Houston. It's flooded. Our tent is flooded. Highway 90 is flooded. Say so you can't go the way. We trapped in this puppy. Amen. Stop putting sandbags all over the house. Everywhere got a sandbag. I put one everywhere except the doorway. I hear about that height, that much height from the, from the ground level to the, to the door. And then the last day, Friday, they said, you're about to get seven, 12 inches of water. I said, wow. I said, how am I going to get some sandbags? I don't have no more sandbag. But I got a son-in-law that knows some stuff. Dig and ride. I don't have no more sign back. Dig and ride, I say, country boy. Tell you what you do, Pastor. Get you some regular uh, garbage bags and fill them up with water. I say, how's that going to be? He said, just like a sign bag. I say, oh, I'm listening to that sound like something over there. He know what he's talking about. Him and I got together and we started filling up water, bags with water. Put them all at the step. And guess what? When the rain came, the rain couldn't get in my house. I said, man, thank God for they can ride. Put hands up twice. Amen. Spare thy, save thy life. Everybody getting water. My brother-in-law then called me up the other day, and my sister called and said, we got sandbags. We're not getting wet. Then I got a call back yesterday saying water came on the house. Why? Because that last day, water crept up. It, I think we got three inches every hour, three inches of water. It, it, it came up. That wall was all the way up. I said, wow. Now, everything outside was totally wet. The doorway, you know, all that was, it was just wet with sandbags. That's all they had. But God is good. Sometimes you don't know who you got in your midst. Amen. Sometimes they may have somebody in the midst of you that knows some stuff you don't know. See, a shut mouth never get fed. But when you can open your mouth and say, you know what, can somebody tell me what I need to do? Somebody may have an answer for you. I thank God that Deacon Rob was over there because I know what I would have done. Amen. I, I was thinking about putting clothes out there on the crest of the doorway. I had all kinds of ideas. I know my wife would have probably got me pretty good over there, but I was willing to chance it. Keep water out because if she got water on that carpet, I'd never get through here. Okay, God is good. Amen. Jesus had to undo Adam's work who passed sin to all humans by falling to sin. Number seven. If you are dealing with doubt, you are vulnerable to temptation. If you are dealing with doubt, oh man, I don't know. I don't know. Satan makes you vulnerable to temptation when you are dealing with doubt. See, in the law, yes, everything is yes and amen. But when we get doubt, Satan come in and can mess your faith up. Why? When you doubt, the Lord done little or no miracles in his own hometown because of the people's unbelief or because of the people's doubt. Amen. Doubt can hinder your faith. Doubt can stop you from rising to the next level. Oh, I, I ain't no chance me trying. I'm not going to pass that. Have you ever done that? I'm not going to pass that test. I might as well just don't even tell. I ain't, I'm not going to embarrass myself. I ain't taking no test. You never know. You never know. Amen. You never know what God may do if you trust in him. Amen. Don't trust yourself. Trust in him. Amen. 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 Okay. So 
Y'all have all those, right? Okay, now we're going to give you, now we're going to where we want to move the message, and we're going to try to get through quick, quick as we can. Go to the book of Luke. Uh, the, uh, go with book of Luke and go to the fourth chapter. Book of Luke 4. Luke, the fourth chapter. Chapter number 4, verse 1. Let's go there. We're going to start there. Give me the Amplified readings of that. Luke 4 and 1. Okay, Amplified. Jesus, full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led in or by the Holy Spirit. He was led. In other words, he didn't go and just say, you know, just thought of a moment. He was led by God. Amen. Uh, 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 amen. He was controlled that he was by the Holy Spirit, but he returned to Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Amen. For doing 40 days in the wilderness where he was tempted, amen, by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were completed, he was hungry. Forty days he went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He went there for that purpose. Why? Because he's going to go back and turn around everything. When the first Adam failed. Jesus Christ was considered the second Adam. The first Adam caused every man and woman born to go straight to hell. The first Adam caused us to sin. Because sin came upon all men because of one man, Adam. When he fell, it caused failure upon the whole generation of men and women that would be brought on the face of the earth. He brought failure to every one of us. But Jesus came in to change everything around to fulfill that which, which Adam failed in. Adam failed Jesus says, I got to go be tempted because when he was tempted, he caused everybody to go to hell. He caused every man to die. And after death comes the judgment. He caused every man, the whole human race, to go through, amen, a part of life where every man would die and sin and go to hell. But Jesus said, I'm going to give him another chance. I'm coming in into the form of flesh to come and live on this earth. Uh, uh, for 40 generations, 33 years or 40 generations, to restore that which Adam caused failure in. Adam caused failure in all human, and the Lord came to change everything around. So he came to correct that which Adam failed in. Amen. So he ate nothing during those days. He went to the wilderness, amen, to stay there 40 days, for he was there to be tempted. Amen. Uh, you look in the King James Version and say he went there to be tempted of the devil. He went there for temptation. He went there for that purpose. So, Satan, you, you cause failure upon a whole human race. I'm coming in. Now you try to tempt me. Let them know I'm going to go and change things around. See, that means that regardless if we fail in life, you can go to Jesus now and get it right and, and get an opportunity to make it into glory. Amen. Verse 3. Then the devil said to him, Satan came there because Satan knew what he was going through. See, Satan been watching us too. He watched you in your most uh, comfortable moment, the time when you get laid back, you know, the time when you get in your recliner and you got your remote working and all that, you know, you, you laid back. You're vulnerable then. Why? Because you're sitting back comfortable, relaxed. You ain't got your mind on the Lord. You got your mind on stuff. And, and, and when we get our mind off the Lord, that's when Satan says that's the best time to come and get you. Because if your mind is made on the Lord, you're going to be concentrating on things concerning the Lord. Amen. But when your mind is on other stuff, that's the best time to come and get you. Amen. So the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, all of this stone to turn into a loaf of bread. No, if you are. In other words, to try to say, now you're going to doubt yourself who you are, if you are the Son of God. Jesus knew who he was. You ought to know who you are. If you know that you've been saved, if you know that you've been born again, you don't let no devil in hell tell you that you're not saved. You need to know it for sure. You need to not have no doubt about your salvation. When the devil come and tell you that you're not saved, look what you just did. Look what you just said. You, we all make mistakes. The word of God said we all have sinned and come short of the glory. For there's none righteous, no, not one of us. 
That means I ain't got no capabilities, and I'm not qualified to judge you. We all got to watch our own selves. Amen. If I'm watching you, I'm ignoring me. And the devil going to come and get me because I'm watching something I ain't got no business. Just like you watching something on TV and you ain't got no business, your mind is not clean. Because your mind looking at some filth and junk, and not only will your mind get wrapped into it, your body starts reacting to what you're seeing. We got to watch that because the, the Bible says, and Paul says, there's no good thing in this flesh. There's nothing good in this flesh. Sometimes men and women of God, when they see something not clean on TV, turn it off. Even if just to get rid of that part, turn it off. Don't let that enter in your spirit because it'll cause you as a man or woman of God for your body to start acting in a way of lust. And when lust has conceived itself, it brings forth death. Amen. We got to be really careful with that. Amen. So Satan comes here. Know that the Lord had been fasting for all day because he's been watching him. And then he tells him, if you are the son of God, why don't you command these stones to be made bread? In other words, turn these stones into bread. All oh, Jesus was out there with a bunch of stones because he was out there in the wilderness around rocks and stones and trees and wilderness and all that. And Satan comes and says, if you are the son of God, trying to tempt him, command these stones to be made bread. Verse 4. And Jesus replied to him, it is written. In other words, I'm standing on the word. Man shall not live and be sustained by bread alone, but by every word and expression of God. Back in King James Version, said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. You ain't going to live by bread alone, but by every word. See, the Lord, in other words, he was fasting for food, but he wasn't liberally fasting for water. He was fasting for food. Amen. Because he knows that's the weakest part of us. That's like now a man can live only three days without water. But without food, you can live more than 40 days. He proved that himself. Amen. Because he came in the body of man. He did not come in a in a spiritual way of saying that he was inhuman. He came as a human being. He took the pains and the, and the hurts that we as men and women go through. He didn't try to keep himself in a, in a body of armor to protect himself from any of the hindrances and, and the, and the wounds and scars like a natural man. But he sustained everything that we can go through. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Verse number five. Satan ain't through yet. That would take him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, habitable world, in a moment of time, in the twinkling of an eye. He showed him all of this, took him on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a brief moment. Amen. They're saying here about the twinkling of an eye and, and the blinking of an eye. He showed them all these things. Twinkling, different between twinkling and blinking. Blinking, every, every one of us can have blinking, but the twinkling is them you can't control. You can control, and some people may, can't blink their eyes. Amen. Uh, but twinkling is something you don't have no control. It's in the middle of the eye, in the middle of their pupil. That is twinkling. You know, like when you get happy, when something good goes your way, when you just want to millions and millions of dollars, just maybe just got an inheritance of millions of dollars, or maybe just somebody just came and gave you a car and you wasn't even expected, that's a twinkling in your eye. But a blinking is, is when something goes before. Your eye blink to protect your eyes. But you can't protect that twinkling. That comes with excitement and joy. Amen. The Lord's going to come like a twinkling in the eye. He's going to come before you know it. It's right there. Hallelujah. So he showed him all the kings of the habitable world in a moment of time, in the twinkling of an eye. Verse 6. He said to him, to you I will give all of this power and authority and their glory, all their magnificence, all their excellency, all their preeminence, and all their dignity and all their grace, for it has been turned over to me, and I give it to whomever I will. Satan ain't got nothing. Satan owns nothing. The word let us know the earth is the Lord's and the footness thereof. He don't own nothing. How can he give you something? Why you want to serve the devil when the devil can't give you nothing? Matter of fact, everybody want to serve the devil when they get in trouble, they can't call him. 
I don't want somebody to serve and I can't call it when I'm in trouble. But everybody wanted the Lord. When that storm came in, we didn't know what it was going to do. Everybody, atheists, praying. Who you praying to? You don't believe in God. Amen. Everybody want to pray then. Amen. When, when that storm came in, hit over there around Corpus Christi and, and, and coming all the surrounding areas over there, and then got over there around, around Galveston and went to our Houston. We know we thought we was, man, we thought we had just made it. Oh, thank God. And hit Walmart. We good. All of a sudden, man, came in two hours city. Up. Oh, wow. That wasn't no, that wasn't no, that wasn't no little puppy. That was a, that was a full-fledged dog. My poor brother-in-law, he said a while back, I'll never forget he told my wife, I had nothing but a little puppy. Ain't nobody called that no puppy. That was a big old dog. I mean, that thing came in, boy, it, I mean, he tore some stuff up. Amen. But here, Satan tried to acknowledge all this I own. For it has been given, turned over to me. Ain't nothing turned over to him. The Lord didn't give him his earth. The earth is the Lord and the foot is thereof. Don't you know you as a child of God, everything is inherited to you. We are heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ. That means he left everything for us to enjoy. If you don't have a nice house, you need to get before God and say, Lord, wait a minute. I'm your child. The earth, if anybody out here that's not serving God has a nice home, I'm supposed to have it. And if I don't have you, tell me the reason why. He, he, he revealed things to you. He lets you know certain things you ain't got right. Certain things you ain't got the way it's supposed to be. You were seeing the thing me and my wife went through the other day trying to go in and try to go and try to get a bottle of water and everything to give to, to our church family, to everybody out there. We went through everything. People lying to us, people promise us, people don't want to talk to us. Nothing was gone. Nothing went well. I said, Lord, I said, mate, if you don't want to get this, I said, well, uh, well, nothing we can do. You have all power. I went in the room. I told my wife, I said, I went in the room and I talked to the Lord. I went straight out. I mean, I came straight from the mouth. Lord, what's going on here? I mean, we even got a great man of God. I know he loved the Lord. That he don't even talk to me. And I said, Lord, what's going on? He said, if you don't want us going that way, I understand. And then all of a sudden, my wife got a phone call, and she talked talk with her brother, and the brother talked with somebody else. I mean, the Lord will tell you. Don't you know the Lord got a way that when there's no way? My, the, the Lord put my wife to call her brother, and brother got in touch with some of the big boys up there and say, y'all go down to the food bank. We need all the volunteers we can. We say, man, we call everybody in the church that we can get everybody a number that we can reach. Try to get a number. Then we, Cassie came over. Then we got the vine. And she got some of the vine people and all that. We got all that. We, we quick as ever, quick we was coming in that digging alley. We had more folk coming behind us, still coming through the door. And we thought we had everybody in there, a big old group of us. All of a sudden, we had more coming in. Amen. And then when we almost got through, here come Pastor Greg. Him and Caden, you know, Caden wasn't going to do very much of nothing. They came in. I said, man, we got a whole lot of folk coming in here. I said, we need to take a picture of the gospel. This was the gospel. We all came together. We was out there working hard to get things done. And living proof was right there in my wife. We worked hard. She, she went herself out. And I dig him in. We walked in there. And I said, how's everything gone? I said, where's Sister Colby? She's sitting down. She's tired. I said, she is. I said, I'm going to see where she at. I walked in. He said, he and she and the other man. I said, I can't go that far now. I'm going back. to you people wondering where I'm going. Then all of a sudden, I got another message. Came back and said, Sister Colby said, we have fulfilled our mission. I said, by Lee, there we are. We are out of here. Dick and Alice say, what's going on? I said, we, we are out of here. Sister Kobe said, we done fulfilled our mission. Let's go. Boy, before, before I know it, I got outside the door. Then I come, Dick and Alice, and that comes so and that comes so and so that. Before we know, we had a whole group of us outside. We took pictures. But we was all in this thing together. I said, we need to take a picture of this. They ain't never stopped coming into the to the film, so many of us out there. But God is good. And then when he got through, 
I also was told to me, get in touch with this young man. You'll notice him. Go there. And I'm going out before we go into the room and get the stuff. I'm going out there looking for that young man. People say, who are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for this young man. I called his name out. And he was over there. I said, hey, uh, my brother-in-law told me that I need to get in touch with you uh, for some baby items. He said, you want it now or want it later? I said, wait till we get through. I want to make sure I put my day's work in. If I had the baby, I we might would have probably been tempted to go home. Get back with that word again, temptation. But I said, no, we're going to put in the day's work. We're going to work first. We work as we got to work. Sister Cobra already had got another young man that talked with the original young man. He told the other young man, and we, and we, and we got all the baby stuff. We had called trying to come ahead of me, getting in there. And my wife, hold on a minute. Hey, young man, come here. My husband, he get his car in there. We had to get Sister Mary and Sister Mary Roberts. We had to get her in. We were the last two cars. Well, all the people mad. We didn't got all the stuff. So we say, then all of a sudden, here come Pastor Greg. With his big old, big old truck. The man said, we don't have the most. Y'all done got it all. I said, well, we satisfied now. We can go home. We went to, straight to church and put all that in cafeteria. It's all in there right now. Hey, Amen. I got here so I can go eat. Okay. Okay. For it has been turned over to me, and I give it to whomever I will. Verse 7. Therefore, if you would do homage to and wish of me just once, not all the time, just this one time. See, Satan sometimes try to tempt us. Just do it this one time. Just bow to me. Just surrender to me. Just succumb to me. Just this one time. You got to do it. And ain't nobody looking. You know. It should be all yours. In other words, it's, you know, just, just one time. I just want to see you one time to bow your knee to me. One time for you to surrender to me. And, and I'll give it all to you just one time. Say, say, no, just do this one time. You know, God understands. Amen. I'll never forget it. And I don't mind exposing it. I had just gotten saved. And I went to my mother's house. My mother was living there at that time. And everybody was drinking. And I said, well, I know I can't drink that heavy stuff. So I'm passing out beer. I said, I'm going to give me a little of that beer. Ain't nobody looking. Everybody here, you know, they, 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 some folks in here, they, I saw them cheering. They don't know what's going on. Well, they got room, so I drank me a little of that shot of beer. So you know, don't look at me like you ain't never done it. <laughs> Amen. All of a sudden, my little nephew ain't saved, don't know about it, don't know Jesus. Ain't, don't go to church, don't want to go to church. That rascal, look at me. I ain't never seen him put a smile on his face. I thought you was a Christian. I say, I say, Jesus. I, I was, I was, I was, I, I was shame all day. Everybody eating good cake and all the stuff is I can't drink. I can't eat nothing. Boy, that word just preached in my heart. I thought you was a Christian. That rascal laughed, boy. He went and told everybody. Cat's still drinking. He drinking beer. I said, oh, Jesus. I thought you was a Christian. Yeah, uh, you know, I was just seeing how he tasted. I didn't drink that much of it. I felt so bad. You know how many days I had to repent? Two or three of them. I felt so bad, didn't want to eat. Amen. Trying to give me a big old... Christmas dinner, you know, big old turkey and all that other stuff. I said, I ain't hungry. This made me feel so bad. Amen. Just do it this once, and all to be yours. Verse 8. And Jesus replied to him, get behind me, Satan. It is written, you shall do homage to and worship the Lord your God. Him only shall you serve. Amen. He's not only the Lord of the, of the living, he's the Lord of the dead. He's all power. That means even those unsafe folk, he's still Lord. The word of God says every knee must bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let me tell you something. Don't worry about the atheists. Don't worry about the uh, people that are, that are cults and, 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 and all different organizations they may be involved with. Everybody got to bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So don't worry about them. If they tell you, I don't believe in all that, say, don't worry. You're going to bow, brother. 
and you will confess. One day you will confess that he is Lord. The value I get him now before it don't be too late. Amen. Him on the shelf. You serve. Verse 9. Then he took him up to Jerusalem, set him on the garbage gable of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, cast yourself down from here. If you, if you, all you say you are, you say you're the son of God, cast yourself from here. Go to verse 10. For it is written, he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all his ways. Amen. He, in other words, he will charge over you to God and watch over you closely and carefully. Verse 11. And on their hands, they will bear ye up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. In other words, it's stating that you can catch yourself down, lest that dash your foot against a stone. Amen. For the Lord gives angels charge over you, keep you in all his ways. Go to verse 12. You shall be not tempt. Jesus replied to him. Scripture says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Verse 13, closing verse. And when the devil had ended every, the complete cycle of temptation. Now, I mean, he went through the whole cycle. See, we got to realize Satan got a cycle he go through. Some folks have failed at the first cycle. Some pass at the second cycle. Some pass at the third time, whatever. But Satan knows if he can't get you that way, he's going to try another way. He's been watching every one of us. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your flaws. He knows where your heart is. He knows where your compassion is. He knows where your weaknesses are. And Satan is not going to catch you in where you're strong at. He's going to catch you in your weak areas. You know why we exercise? To strengthen that weak part of us. And we know that our stomach is, 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 is big and we want to make it smaller. That's, that's, that's the area where we're weak at. So what we do, we get stomach muscles to try to make that become more firm like a, a six-pack. Okay, y'all know what that is. If our arms are flabby and don't have the muscles, we work our arms to what? Build up our muscles. So Satan knows where your flaws are at because he's been observing you. He's not going to tell you where you're strong at. Some folks are strong in all of this. They're, some folks say, Satan could get me at my drinking because I don't drink. I ain't never drunk. My wife ain't never drunk. She don't know what it is to drink. She don't know what it is to smoke. She ain't never, she ain't never did that. But see, I did all of that. I was smoking, smoking dope, marijuana. I was doing all that. I got turned on marijuana by women. I ain't got turned on by no guys. But we used to go in that room. We passed that roach around. Y'all know what no roach is. Okay. They ain't one of them things you step on. A roach is the, is the, is the part where you put your joint at, and you go ahead till the, till you get down to the, to the point you can't smoke no more, and everybody get a sip of it, and boy, they are looking at you to see if you gonna inhale it. I want that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And they pass it all around. Then once around, I didn't get another. Somebody just a little another one up. Pass this around. Every one of us was high as a cat. The man with a cat, he put all of us in jail. We was all high. Everybody high. Amen. But I did all those things. Somebody said, Pastor, you ain't never been through nothing. No, baby, don't believe that. I, I was so messed up. Amen. I would get so drunk and so messed up that I didn't know how I got home. Nobody but the Lord got me home. I, when I got, got home or when I got where I wanted to go, I said, how did I get here? We used to go and close all the clubs down. We used to go to all of them. Y'all remember all them clubs? The Elegante and all of them. I mean, not the Elegante. What was that? The Sky Room and all the Y'all remember all them areas? Hey, man, I used to go to all of them. Continental Club. Y'all remember that? That was them old days. Y'all remember that? The Trap Club. Y'all remember the Trap and all that? Hey, Amen. Downtown. We do all of it. As I met, uh, uh, that's how I met uh, Pastor uh, 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 Burton. Met him in the club. Yeah. I met a whole lot of folk in them club. And I had a name in the club. I ain't going to tell y'all what it is because my wife don't like that name. Amen. Hi, to my CC. Who said that? Okay. 
And when the devil had ended his complete cycle of temptation, he temporarily <laughs> left him. That is, stood all from him until another more opportune and favorable time. In other words, after the devil had left him, the devil got away from him, wait for another favorable time to get somebody else. He couldn't get him. He tried every cycle. The devil going to try every cycle. He knows everything. He knows all your, your, all your flaws. He knows your weaknesses because he's been watching you. He knows that when you run your mouth sometime, don't know when to shut it up. He said, oh, yeah, he got a mouth. He runs his mouth in a moment. He knows if you got a problem of jealousy, you got a problem of hatred, you got a problem of, uh, of, of shutting up, you got a problem of lying. He knows all of that. And he'll, he'll put that on you to make you succumb so God can't bless you. And the Lord give us strength. He's not going to put on you more than you can bear. He's not going to allow you to go through something and let you know you can deal with it. He's not going to allow his children to be subject to, to failure when he, when, he, when he know they're not yet ready for it. But he's there for you. But when you start lying and you start finding a way to try to get out of a situation, when the enemy tip you and you succumb to his temptation, that makes the Lord very displeased. Just like a parent. When you've done all you can for your child, and your child get out there and, and hurt you to your heart. What, what have I neglected? I've given him everything. I've given her everything. I was a good mother. I was a good father to my children. I blessed them. I took care of them. I raised them better than that. That's a hurt. The Lord is our heavenly father. And when we mess up like that, that also hurts him. I want everyone to stand. There's somebody here today saying, Pastor, I know this word was for me today. Today I make my mind up that the Lord is going to be the choice of my life. I'm ready today to turn away from all my sins. Now, man cannot forgive sins, only Jesus can. But if you're here today saying today is a new day, I'm going to start a new life. I'm going to start a new cycle in my life. I'm going to turn things around in my life because Jesus is going to be the centerfold of my life. If that's you, I want you to come. If there's somebody here today saying, I knew the Lord, but I backslid, but the Lord is married to the backslider. And saying today, I want to come back to the Lord. It don't have to be, you don't have to be a member of this church, you know, we just a building. The Lord's not coming back to get a building. He's coming back to get people that are saved. If there's somebody here today saying, I'm looking for a church home, a place where I can grow, a place where I can mature, a place where I can be everything God wants me to be, you know, we invite you to come today. If there's somebody here saying, you know, Pastor, I got a problem with smoking. I got a problem with drinking. I got a problem with lying. We all did. We all did. Amen. We all did. We all did. If you're saying, you know what, Pastor, today I make my decision. I'm ready to turn it all around. I'm ready to make a new decision in life. I'm ready to start a new page in my life because I've been messing up. I've been doing wrong. I've been making bad errors in my life. I've been doing things I know is not right. I've been a hurt to my family, to my own self, and I'm ready to stop it. That's why I expose myself to let you know that I did it. I can't throw a stone at you. I can't sit back and say, you can't make it in because you did this. I did it too. But let me tell you one thing about the Lord. He said in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins before him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He will clean you up. You saying, Pastor, I was dirty, but the Lord said, I clean you up. I want to come and clean you up today. I want to come and clean all that filth out of your life today. I want to come and start your new life today. I want to come and turn a new page in your life today. If that's you, I want you to come. You say, you know, Pastor. I don't know, Pastor. I've been messing up. I've been doing wrong. I've been making mistakes. I've been stepping all over folk. I've been lying and deceiving folk. I've been deceiving my own self. But today is going to be a new beginning, a new start. That's you, I want you to come. See, we don't know how quick our Lord's going. Let me tell you something that's going to surprise you. North Korea is just a fraction from attacking America. A fraction. They're already hitting over there around Japan. And uh, Japan is an ally of America. America, uh, Trump already told them that if you hit one of my allies, we're coming against you. You know what? The, the, the prime minister over there in, in, in North Korea says, are we going to still fly our bombs, our ICBMs, into, in, into ballistic, ballistic bombs? We're going to still send them over, and you ain't going to stop us. 
We don't know how quick we might be out of here. But the Lord promised he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But he promised us if we keep the words of his patience, he will keep us from the hour of temptation that's going to try the world. I don't know about you, but, 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 but I'm, I'm waiting on his arrival any moment. He may come at the twinkling of an eye, at the blinking of a moment. He's right here. He's going to come like a thief in the night. No man knows the hour nor the time of his coming, but he's coming. And his reward is with him to give every man according to his works. There's somebody here today saying, you know, Pastor, 